morning or afternoon, as the case may be. <laughs> good, good afternoon. Hi, hello, Brad. You're a little, you're a little behind you. there, huh? Oh, well, you know how it is. <laughs> but I see we hello. have Julie Mazurik with us. Wonderful. Wonderful, Julie. Glad you're here. George is Thank here. You. Hello, Michael Schulman. Hello. Great. Welcome. George, you ready to take over? Yep, I'll go ahead and get started. Today's featured speaker is Perrette Harmon, General Manager of the Scotts Valley Water District. Please visit our website at scottsvalleyseniorlife.org. Sign up for our newsletter, suggest future projects, and donations are always welcome. And they're tax deductible. Donations directly benefit senior citizens around Scotts Valley. SBSLA is run by an all volunteer group of seniors. Nearly 100% of donations received are used to directly help seniors living in the area. And designate Scotts Valley Senior Life Association as your favorite charity when you shop through Amazon. We've um, purchased automatic electronic defibrillators at Montevalle and Spring Lake Parks. We've purchased an exercise machine for Montevalle patio umbrellas for the senior center and uh, we hope to do more workshops annually on the top of topic of senior health uh, workshops in person there we are with our donation box which where is that do you have that dave yes i have the box mm -hmm. <laughs> we need to get that in a prominent location so um, Scotts Valley Senior Life is supporting the Scotts Valley Performing Arts Center and through our support of the Scotts Valley Community Theater Guild, the Performing Arts Center combined with the existing library will transform the old roller rink space into a new cultural arts center. The PAC expects to host approximately 400 events per year with musicals, plays, recitals, classes, workshops, traveling shows, speakers, and much more. Go to the sbcththeaterguild.org to find out more about it. And there's a picture of what it's gonna be like. And this presentation will be recorded for possible later viewing on the Scotts Valley Senior Life Association website and we have several videos posted there if you'd like to go back and see past Zoom sessions that we've done. Uh, we are recording this. You are consenting being recorded by attending this Zoom session. You can disable your video feed if you choose to do so by doing stop video and you can conceal your phone number if you've got one listed. George, you might point out at the top of that uh, page is the new logo. We have a new uh, logo for Senior Life Association. Good point, Dave. Yeah, I love that logo. Yeah. Was that who was that that that, that did that for us? Uh, business with pleasure. That's what I was. Right here in Scotts Valley, and yeah. you can see the 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 helping hand underneath, uh, and then the individuals above it. So what we had before was not totally unique. We thought it was about time to get a, a unique um, a logo. So that's our slides for the moment. I will stop sharing. And Brett, I have made you co-host so you can share. Okay, thank you, Dave. Okay, here we go. So hello, everybody. There are a lot of uh, familiar faces, some new ones. Um, I was presenting at the Senior Life Association webinar earlier in the spring, I think March or April, and I promised that I will bring back some of my staff and they can highlight um, the activities and projects we have going on. So I'm, I'm sure for some of the people, today is a disappointment because today was supposed to be Leanne's show and <laughs> somehow, um, instead of Leanne, you're getting me again. So Leanne um, is no longer with Scotts Valley Water District. She worked for us almost um, 10 years and uh, she uh, 
found um, got a better, bigger, more exciting offer. Um, so we just we're very excited for her, but um, it's a bittersweet moment when we had to say goodbye to her. So you'll get you're stuck with me again. I'll try to do my best, Leanne, and some um, that I can. But I'm sure if you have any questions that I'm not able to answer, I'll take it take it back to my office and um, get back to you later. So we have a lot going on. I'm going to share four main um, four main um, areas or topics of interest, and we're starting with something that is not a um, particular positive news. Well, to be I'm, on that. I'm sure I'm sure you're all aware of where we are this this summer, but I'm going to show you some pictures, some uh, maps that make That's it really picture. really clear here. So white is good, red is not so good. As you see, um, a third of the, the United States is in um, not so good colors. And the darkest, darkest, um, deepest purple red is exceptional drought. Um, so we are not the worst, as you can see, California. If you go uh, uh, our neighboring um, states, some of them are even, um, even worse shape um, but we what's considered in california is extreme drought i believe 43 um, counties in the state of california um, the governor has declared um, the drought emergency for them um, santa cruz county is not one of them and it's kind of a little different this time around um, so this map shows that in comparison with prior big beginning of prior big drought uh, where the Southern California was truly the hot spot. Um, this time, the counties that are in um, the worst shape are actually North Bay and end up um, north from us. So it's it's quite different. So it is for all of us second consecutive dry year. Typically, you don't hear um, what agencies talking about drought if it's a single year because that's just the name of the game in California. We get dry years, we get wet years. When we get the second one in a row, um, we start being concerned. So it is the fourth driest year on record. Um, and snowpack, we do not get anything from snowpack, but again, statewide, snowpack is little over half of the average. And obviously, at this time of the year, there's nothing being added to the snowpack. So that's where we end water year. Just to remind the people um, that are not um, operating typically with the acronym WY, that is water year. It starts October 1st, goes through end of September. Um, so that's what you'll be, you'll be seeing on those slides. Um, Major reservoirs at 50% capacity. I just got an email today popped into my inbox talking about Lake Mead. Um, equally grim conditions there. And uh, 45. So emergency drought proclamation is issued, issued for 45 counties in, in the state. So let's come a little closer here. So, oh, oh, okay. So we have stage two water shortage established for 2021. And uh, why is um, there are a couple of different things we look at, our board looks at um, before they call it um, what stage we are. So the first thing is rainfall. And this year, um, water year again, we received uh, shy of 17 inches. So that is uh, under half. That's 40% of uh, long-term average. Also, what's interesting is um, if we go back to the last uh, drought, that was four years, the cumulative deficit, the rainfall over those four years was 43%. Uh, if we actually look at where we are, and we're in the second year of, um, okay, I'm going to admit Frank here. I know it popped up on my screen, but welcome, Frank. Welcome back. <laughs> So what's really interesting with this last four years, as I said, we are in the second dry year. But if we look at the cumulative over last four years, our rainfall deficit is actually more, is larger than it was in the, in the 2012 through 2015 drought. 
Um, on a good side, on a positive news, our groundwater levels have remained stable. And that's uh, partially due to all of you, because that's um, what um, gets pumped out of the basin, what gets used is um, the amount of water that we collectively, not only in Scotts Valley, because um, we have a shared basin, but collectively in the North Santa Cruz Pound, uh, County use. So we've done really, really good um, over the last decade or so, and our levels have not um, dropped during the last two years or a four year period. Um, it is something that also we need to keep in mind is a groundwater storage um, and the responsiveness of that to, uh, to the rainfall comes with a delay, especially in, um, in those aquifers uh, that the municipal water purveyors pump from. Those are deep down 500 to 1000 feet down. They outcrop um, up in Santa Cruz mountains. So we do not know for sure, but it's estimated that the drop of water that rains on in up higher in Santa Cruz Mountains, that it actually makes to our aquifers two, three, possibly even five, year, uh, five years later. So three years ago, we had an average rainfall year. It, is, it could be that what we're seeing today, the groundwater levels being stable are due to the type of the water year we had two years ago. So this drought is gonna really uh, present itself in our aquifers two years from now. So that's the main reason we're starting to be uh, more cautious now. And um, uh, we also don't know what next year is gonna bring or year after that. So that's the main reason, not that we are running out of water now, but to be prepared and um, the stage two is, is calling for that. Um, so what are we gonna do about that? So instead of telling people what they cannot do, we uh, put on our thinking caps this year and we try to um, stay on the positive note, call for people um, their own willingness and ability to be water efficient. The people who are already very efficient there is no reason for them to be worried to say that they have to cut back even more. Um, so we're really kind of making it more of a customizable program and uh, people who can cut back and uh, are in that space, who, especially the people who have a lot of outdoor, there is um, certainly more savings to be had there. Uh, those can cut back as much as they would like, um, but Altogether, we are hoping to get 15% of um, our total system portable demand um, uh, reduction in comparison with prior year. And we are going to give away some money to get there. We are going to give away some uh, free items. So on the right side of it, you see um, some of the examples of free water saving devices that we offer. We do that all the time. It's not anything specific for this year, but just as a reminder, um, um, hose nozzles, high efficiency shower heads, pan scrapers, uh, faucet aerators, bathroom and sink, uh, kitchen sink, um, toilet leak detection dye uh, strips. So all you have to do is to come uh, to our offices. By the way, we have been open throughout the COVID. We just uh, set up some um, protective measures here, but we, our office has been open and is open from eight to five every single day. And um, we are using the same um, measures that the rest of the uh, businesses are using if you're vaccinated. Do not have to use a mask. If you're not, uh, please wear a mask. Come stop by and pick up some of those free devices. But on the left side, what you see, that is a new, we're gonna call it a game. We're playing a game this summer and you can compete um, uh, with yourself. First and foremost, you're comparing your own water use this summer with your own water use, your own household water use uh, last, uh, last summer, the same month. So this is call for action. And uh, each month 
we're going to be raffling off prizes. Um, there's going to be a $100 um, prize every month. And at the end of the um, four month period in the fall, it's a grand prize that is $500. And you can, the winner can use the $100 either as a credit on the water bill, or they can use that $100, pick a um, Scotts Valley business and um, get a gift card from them. And the same is true for the 500. So please, please, please spread the word. We want as many people uh, getting excited um, and uh, playing along, challenging, challenging themselves. So what you need to do is the goal for you is to get the, cut back your water use 15%. What you need to do how do you how do you know that you cut back your water 15% is you go to this wonderful tool we have is watersmart so it's an online um, portal where you go to um, see how much water you're using if you haven't signed up there yet you you're missing out <laughs> big time so if you don't know how to find it, call the office again. We have the information on our website. Um, but essentially, you go there. You can go every day, check how you're doing. But what we really need you to do is to go there after the month of June um, is over. You go there at the beginning of July. You check how much water you used in June of this year. You, there's a graph. You see how much water you used in 2020, in month of June, if it's 15% less, then you go, there is a form, you just put few um, pieces of information there, hit submit, and it comes to us, and you're in the, in the, in the raffle. So, let me see, let me see, I just got busy talking, okay. So anything, I'm gonna actually pause here and because I hear some people might have questions and we'll talk about that um, water saving challenge now, if anybody has any questions and then I get going, continue on. If you wanna ask a question, be sure to unmute. Okay, no questions, but I'm sure that if you get stuck somewhere, um, and so if you in, if you in June, you see you didn't get to 15%, no worries. There's still July, there's August, and there's September. So in each of those four months, you can um, see if you meet the target and put in your name in the raffle. If you win in one month, that does not make you ineligible to compete to put your name in in the next month. So you could, the lucky ones here, <laughs> you could win four times in a row. If if uh, if you have a a uh, lucky hand and if you meet the a fifteen percent uh, reduction target, um, we do have a few things that we're asking our customers to do this summer to get us to that total reduction. Is um, the the one thing that is kind of a little bit of a restriction, uh, if you will we are asking everybody to cut back their um, outdoor irrigation to two times a week. If you have a mature landscape, that should be sufficient to get you through. Your landscape should be pretty happy with that. Um, but if you're watering more than that, check your irrigation controllers, make the change. And that in itself, I can pretty much guarantee you it's gonna get to that 15% reduction. Second one is if you have a pool and if it's not covered, get a pool cover. It is pretty amazing how much um, pools evaporate and it essentially is a water loss. So uh, we are, we introduced a new um, rebate this summer. So we are paying um, our customers who get pool covers and install them 50% um, of the cost of that material and or labor up to $1,000. So if you, if you get a pool, if you know somebody who has a pool and no pool cover, make sure they're aware of that. Reduce leaks, always, anytime, WaterSmart that I mentioned, I'm gonna go back to WaterSmart and talk about this. Um, replace lawn, replace toilets, we have rebates for that. Um, and use recycled water. 
So we have activated our recycled water station, fill station, by um, the Senior Center, Community Center Library there. This year, it's all volunteers. So it's mainly our board of directors who are doing it. Um, it was just not an activity that made a whole lot of money sense um, for staff to use our staff to, to run it or to hire somebody. So our directors actually took it upon themselves to say, well, we can do it. So for that reason, we're not open every day. We have one day a week um, on Saturdays from nine to one that it's open. It's getting a lot of use. I think it has been now three times open. I think the first uh, weekend, first Saturday, we got um, seven people um, coming through and it has been growing since then. If you're uh, already a user, you know the drill. If you're not, there is a, a, a little process up front. We do need to, our permit, in Scotts Valley Water District, our recycled water permit requires that we uh, uh, educate you, um, water, uh, recycled water user, uh, what um, this supply is about, what you can and cannot do with that. So there's a few slides, a uh, few pages you are required to read through. When you show up first time, you get a card and then you can come back and um, uh, any, any time to get up to, I believe it's 250 gallons um, of, of water. How would okay. we find that for it? Is there something on the website? How would you find the uh, information about that? Yeah, it is on the website. Go. It is on the website. You can also go just to uh, visit that, that place um, across next to library, across from the senior center um, between nine and one on Saturdays. Even if you just want to learn about it, you don't have to show up with a, with a truck or container first time. You can just go and, and feel it out and get yourself the card. Um, but yeah, the information is on our website. You can also call our office. We can walk you through that. Um, you can get the, the training done beforehand and then be ready to go and get the water on Saturday. So we have options for you. Great. Any right. other questions? I just stop me as I'm going through that. Okay. Okay. So. This is the water smart. You've heard me to say it over and over. I'm so um, so excited about this tool. I use it often. There's not a whole lot. I live in a in a small apartment, so for me, there's not a whole lot of movement there. But I can't help not going there and just testing and seeing what happened yesterday and how am I doing over the course of the week? How am I doing over the course of the month? In comparison with last year, in comparison with um, similar properties. So the more information, the more data uh, you put in there and customize it based on your household uh, profile and, and your, the type of um, appliances you have, if you have a pool or not, it is not only smarter, it get, keeps getting smarter. Um, so for example, this is um, just, I did a screenshot from my own. So it tells you, um, you know, you, it tells you your own gallons per day. It tells you what efficient ones use, what the average is. It gives you a water score. Um, so you can check your hourly usage, usage history. It actually is more granular than that. You can go down to 15 minutes. If you're real geek, you can kind of go and, and um, check it out. You can receive alerts for high or unusual water use. We've been saying it's, it sends you um, leak alerts. So leak alerts necessarily doesn't mean you have a leak. Leak alert means you have a high usage or unusual water use and very likely it's due to a leak, but it does not have to be. So it also could be like somebody has been filling a pool that the, the system could detect it. Hmm, there's something unusual it could be a leak, I'm gonna ping you. And by default, it uses the email that we have uploaded there. If you have not changed the profile, if you gave us an email um, when you signed up um, with your account long, long time ago, this got uploaded to WaterSmart. So your email could have changed. That could be a reason you're not getting them. So please make sure you have a current email and or 
um, phone number. So once you get in there first time, you can change it. You can choose your preferences of communication. You can pick them, I want to get um, text message instead of email, or I, I want to get both. You also know the best, your household uh, typical water use patterns. So you could actually say, um, for example, if you're traveling, you could set it at zero gallons. You could say, I don't want my house, nobody at my house, my meter should not be using, letting through it, any water during this time. I want to know if it happens. So there's a lot of bells and whistles. I know we've been promoting now for a um, couple of years, just a basic register and you get um, leak alerts. There's so much more this tool can do. So I would really, really encourage you to spend some quality time with this tool. You see, compare your bills, it's there. Um, there's also tips. Once you put in what you already have done and what type of household you have, how much indoor, outdoor use you have, how big of a household you have, you can access tips specific to you, how to save water. And the water saving challenge is there. So there's many reasons to visit, visit this place. Make sure you bookmark it and make it a uh, place you go often. Um, and so one thing I would like to, I think I have asked David, you and George before, if you're interested in a uh, water district coming and doing more of a, now we can do in-person um, training at, the, at Monte Valley or um, your um, senior life association. So the offer still stands. If you would like uh, for us to kind of make you to really be uh, better users of this, um, we would love to do that. We can do it here at Santa Margarita Community Room. We can come to you. Um, so think about that. And of course, it's that that is that offer is open to any groups, um, but we don't know very well how to find the groups, but we know you do have a good follower, follower, um, followers there. And um, so we thought we'd start with you. Um, so if you're interested, reach out to me, please. Uh, that's wonderful, Brett. Uh, wonderful yeah. offer. Thank you. That okay. could be our next big workshop. We can do it online, but some people, you know, they truly get stuck on this. So if we're not here, we're here Monday through Friday and somebody has time and on Saturday they sit down and they want to move around. It's like, okay, I don't remember how to do that. I don't know where I'm going, I'm stuck. So sometimes just having somebody who you can bring your laptop or iPad or phone with you and we can actually help you to um, kind of move through that environment. Um, we, we are thinking about making some YouTube videos and having those available at 24 seven. At this point, we're not, we don't have them yet. So I think both. We're happy to do um, a online true kind of hands-on, maybe we move it at a slower pace and people can have their own um, devices next next to the screen possibly. So I'd love to, love to see what, what your needs are and what we can offer. So maybe. Is the community room open yet at the water district? We have not opened it to outside groups yet, but we are using it for board meetings now. So if a staff member is present, we can we can certainly use that. Yep. Brett, uh, Water Smart is a wonderful tool. Last week, I got the emergency alert. We had a major leak and it saved me a ton of water and expense. So yep. it's, it really helped us. No, it's pretty awesome. I mean, I, I'm, this is, I can't say enough about this. So we have last week, as of last week, we were at 34% of our customers were registered. So it's really high, high level. I've never seen you typically when you get into double digits, that's good, but we keep climbing. So I'd like it to be hundred percent. There is no reason why people wouldn't want this tool. It really is not, you know, we're not one of the ones that you have to worry about. We are selling your name to somebody. Customer information is confidential. The only party that is gonna have the, uh, the information is, is us and we already have your information. So um, if you, if you, you know, spread the word in your networks amongst your friends, neighbors. Um, please, please do that. I think we have a raised hand here. Uh, yeah. Hi, Perrette. That would be me. Hi, um, Frank. Hey, how you doing? 
Good. Um, great thing about the smart water meters. Uh, I'm assuming 100% of your customer base, your connections are smart water meter, meter enabled. Is that correct? They are. Yep. And then about a third of those are actually logged into the website and monitoring the data on a regular basis. Yep. Do you have, we, have you been able to call data in terms of, and this is probably a hard question, but overall savings since you implemented smart meter? And the, and the reason I ask that, I, I, I got to just take my hats off to hats off to Scotts Valley Water District because you guys are very creative. You're always doing new conservation programs, trying to keep you know the forefront of people. And I'm just really impressed with what you guys are doing. It would be great to see that, and certainly other districts and you know other users of water. And I'll keep it sort of at, at a generic level. What we have seen is we have comparison for now three years of the people who typically um, put in the leak adjustment um, request. Uh, so we saw the number of gallons dropping by 50% from a year to year. We had it at 7 million gallons. And those, this is not a total number of water wasted or total number of gallons that potentially was wasted through leaks. This is only the people that took it upon themselves to request a leak adjustment. That means we, if it's if it's duly is a leak, we uh, and people fixed it, we give them 75% of the credit of the excess amount. So it's only that group of people. It is from a year to year. We had seven million gallons one year, and the next year we had 3.5 million gallons logged in through that. And so and now we're getting close to end of June would be the year we are closing this third year. And we are, I think, a shy of three. So it's a little drop there. But the reason why we can't compare the full consumption, the total consumption yet, because we've been gradually adding the, the eye meters and we completed the project, we became 100% I meters uh, in February or March this year. So this is a first year now going forward, we can truly look at 100% versus 100% and how consumption is doing. Well, that's great. And have you promoted this to the other districts? I know the other districts do a variety of things. I think Santa Cruz is, has a pending implementation for, and they're avoiding smart meter nomenclature because of PG&E stuff a bunch of years ago. I'm not even sure what they're calling that, but. Yeah, we're actually school. not calling them smart meters either. We're calling them intelligent meters. Got it, okay. And just so the portal is smart <laughs> and meters are intelligent. That's our. <laughs> no, I agree. I, I I mean, it's, you know, perception is perception. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to be careful, but. So no, Kale Creek, I know, so Kale Creek Water District is in the, in the middle of the um, installing eye meters. So they are hopefully pretty soon. I'm thinking maybe a year out and they will be also fully um, intelligent or smart or all of the above. Right. City of Santa Cruz, um, I don't know. I don't know where they are. I know they've kind of looked into different vendors. And what makes it really challenging for San Lorenzo is their topography. It truly relies on, um, you know, being able to access radio or cell phone towers. Right. And it's very mountainy there. So I'm, I'd be surprised if any solution is going to get to 100% um, implementation in San Lorenzo Valley. But they're also looking into at least their more of a clusters to do something like that. Oh, that's great. All right, no, thank you for that. Yeah. Okay, anybody else? Okay, 100% complete. Okay, so this is another um, another um, kind of idea of how the screen is going to look like. It truly shows you the the daily uh, gallons, and it's all you see all blue bars here. So the, if it's any red components, any red caps, or any red bars, it is again um, here. It's nicely said. It's possible leak. We don't know for sure. The computer doesn't know for sure what it is. But it's looking at it, it's using algorithm, and it's like, hmm, it's something funny about it. So you might want to pay attention to that. You can click on any of that, and it opens it on an hourly basis, and you can click on the hour, and it opens on 15 minute increments. And this is week, but you can move day, two weeks, two months, year. 
And so if you go there, um, there is a place services and forms, um, water saving challenge. And then if you click on that, open the form, that's where you put in your name to win prizes. So should look familiar if you go there. And this is a URL up there. Um, so if you just type that in, svwd.watersmart.com, that is a direct way. You can always find it on our website, but if you bookmark this, and that's you, uh, your go-to address. Okay, so this is actually equally exciting topic, but I know anytime when you hear rates and um, possibly something going up, people do not do not find it exciting. It is something worth following though, because it's a process. It is, we don't take it lightly. Our board is very mindful of um, keeping the rates as um, affordable and reasonable as possible. It is a, a prudent financial um, activity to go through periodic water rate study, um, uh, water rate studies, because we know what happens when we kind of close our eyes and say, pretend it's not necessary. It's going to come sooner or later, and then the increases have to be much more um, significant um, at, in that case. So we have been doing it since November. I said it's a process. You, you'll hear a few things that are kind of maybe over your head, and I totally get it because even for us, for staff who doesn't do it every day and for the directors, there's a lot to know about the framework. Um, Proposition 218 is part of it, um, and nothing about this is simple. But we started with a consultant in November, and we are now, by June, in the rate design um, phase of that. So it starts with truly kind of establishing the goals and policies. The next is looking at the district's total revenue requirements. That means we're looking at our operating uh, expenses, we're looking at our capital needs, and we're looking at the total revenue gap, if there is any. And once that's um, developed, then we um, go into cost allocations. You see it on the slides coming up, very um, um, academic, if you will, uh, process. So I'll kind of go that. And then it ends with um, Prop 218 notices going out. Um, so that is uh, going to be the final step before um, public hearing and potential rate adoption. So down below here in the charts, this is actually our, oh, this is water district, this is our portable water fund, and this is what we're looking at from, we are in um, the first bar fiscal year. Now we switched from YW to FW, that's fiscal year, starts in July, ends in June. So this current fiscal year, our capital, um, capital needs, capital improvement needs, or um, in our budget, 4.5 million. Um, and that is due to one very, very um, costly project, orchard run uh, water treatment upgrades. On average, our needs are about two to three million a year. And that's, um, we have projects behind all of those bars. Um, they never happen exactly the way, but by and large, we have been spending about two, three million a year um, upgrading, repairing, replacing our infrastructure. And that is not, you, you, could, you could say it's a lot of money. It is a lot of money, um, considering that our assets are about 50 million. Spending 3 million a year is not um, overspending it um, because most of the water assets um, infrastructure is has a lifetime of, well, I'm going to actually go, the, probably the shortest life is meters and batteries, those are 10 year life. And one of the longest life is pipes. Pipes often go 100 years. So we are kind of in between those 10 to 100 years, we need to be replacing, repairing, upgrading um, everything before it breaks down because it's always is less costly to replace it when you are not in an emergency situation. So. So this is where, where, where we started. We took our 
expenses, both our operating and, and capital expenses for the six, uh, five years to come, and our revenue if we did not do anything, and that is our fund balance. Um, this is now combined. We have two funds. We have portable and recycled fund. This isn't one of those Prop 218 um, intricacies that we have to be keeping those two funds. Different supply has different cost and have different people who benefit from that. We have to keep them separately and analyze them separately. But this is combined. This is combined fund balance. Um, the red line is our target. We like to be um, about four or five million there. Um, we need to be. It's, there's um, components of that, why, how it's decided uh, that amount of um, funds that in our reserves. So as you see, next year um, we are fine, but then we keep dropping. And by fiscal year 2026, we would have used up all of our reserves. So obviously this, this situation is not going to be um, workable or desirable by uh, the staff, the board, nor for our customers. So the proposed financial plan is, and it's a really cool spreadsheet for those people who like numbers and spreadsheets. Um, it has a lot of um, formulas in there that we can kind of toggle different assumptions, different numbers. So where we ended up um, is applying 5% revenue adjustments each year for the next five years on the portable side and for the recycled water fund. And the main reason why it needs to go up more, it's, it's a very small customer base. We have about 70 accounts. And as you know, the people that there is no economies of scale if you're operating with a very small customer base. So that's why it is more expensive to, um, to maintain and operate a relatively a small, um, small customer base fund. But if we do that, if we apply those adjustments, then as you can see, the um, blue bars meet um, our uh, red line, then being close to that. So this is the, the kind of the fun and complicated piece of it. Um, uh, it's very clear in the um, state state law proposition 218 that the benefit and cost there needs to be a very clear nexus. Um, so every um, we cannot we cannot subsidize from one customer on on um, at the expense of the other. It needs to be truly what are they paying and what are they getting. So it goes down to this level of of detail. It truly takes every different type of activity what we do, for example, customer service, there is no difference why a customer service cost should be different for a small meter versus large, large meter, because to pick up a phone call, talk to a customer or send a bill, it costs us exactly the same amount of money, regardless of the meter size or regardless of how much water is used. Meter maintenance, it's different. It is more expensive to maintain a larger meter versus a um, smaller meter. Um, the peaking capacity that is very much um, it, it, it's it's driven by the type of use. So if let's say um, there is um, landscape tends to be that that it is dormant or doesn't get used in winter much, and then in summer it puts a lot more demand on the system. So it needs to be again taken into consideration. Conservation who pay for this program is the high water users. So people who are already efficient and, and um, conserving, they do not pay towards this. So this kind of gets down to this level before we can start talking about rates. Okay, and now we are getting to uh, uh, true um, rate rate uh, distribution and, and rate making here. Um, so the 5% that you saw earlier, total revenue increase, it is um, a ceiling. The board has um, in the last five year um, rate schedule that was adopted in 2016, they also adopted a policy that whatever rate schedule gets um, established at the beginning, those are not necessarily the increases that the customers will be seeing over the five-year course of time because a lot could change. 
those are just our best predictions at that time, and they might or might not be true to reality once we get to year three or four. And our board did. So we had five years of increases, and two out of the five, they decided before implementing the increases to implement something less than what was on books. So it truly happens. And so the 5% proposed is going to be a ceiling. It is not that every customer is going to see the 5%. Some people, some customers are going to see more in the first year. Some people, customers are going to see less. Um, and the final study that has exact rate increases for each customer category is going to be reviewed by our board on August 12th board meeting. Then the Proposition 218 notices, they're going to be issued um, later in August, and they're going to be um, starting the 45-day um, protest period when um, customers can send in their uh, protest letters um, that will be counted um, by before when the board meets again in October for public hearing. So this is kind of the, the timeline. But there is a lot of information that we have already. We had a board meeting in last week, two weeks ago in June, and we were hoping to get a little more interest from customers to come and really kind of be there, learn about this, this process, learn what we have done so far. We did not get very good turnout. Um, if people are interested, again, if groups are interested, I'd be happy to come and get more into details. Um, it's just a little, you know, I'm, I'm always disappointed in myself if we get to the tail end of that and I hear on social media that, how did this happen? We never were told, we never learned. So we try really, really hard reaching our customers, but I, we don't do a very good job of engaging and getting them to come and not only seeing the Prop 218 pro, um, notices at the end, but kind of be there with us when the directors are making really tough decisions on, on what, what to approve and why to do that. So I'm going to pause here again because it's been a lot of me talking and, and there might be some questions. Fred, this is Donna. Yeah, hi Donna. And uh, hi, I just, well, you, you hit a topic you get close to home for not just the city, but for you. I, I was part of the, uh, I was at the, the uh, cities outside the frame at the park, and I had someone that almost the entire walk talked to me venting about water issues. And I kept saying, do you, and what are we doing to plan, and what about the future, and all these about Santa Margarita, and the meetings that are available. And I mean, I keep finding people, some that don't know, and then you know, this person said, well, I went one time and I didn't feel I was listened to, so I'm not going. And you finally go, well, <clears throat> if you're not giving any input, how do you expect to have, you know, any influence? So um, I know, you know, I, I know how much you outreach you do and try to reach people. And sometimes we'll never reach everyone. We'll never reach as many as we'd like. But I do appreciate the fact that you've been here several times on social media other you know resources available to engage our community and um, sometimes I mean some of the things I brought up when they talk about rate increases and they say well we save water but the rates went up and of course you know I shared what you've shared there's still expenses and you know recycled water and things like that I, I know it's frustrating but I know that you continue to, to reach out like you are today and appreciate it when sometimes you don't feel like, <laughs> like there's the response you'd like. Thank you, Donna. Thank you. I know it's not a most favorite activity for people to be engaged into, you know, tune in into board meetings uh, at the end of the work day. But I, I'm, you know, I, I would like really kind of more of a, um, a dialogue. I would invite people to call me anytime, email me anytime. I could come to them. Um, it doesn't happen. So I'll, I'll keep wrecking my brain, kind of see how we can, uh, we can really kind of more educate and inform rather than get to the tail end and then be, you know, a lot of frustration. And um, 
So more to come. Any other questions? Yeah, Brett, I see Jack has his hand up. Yeah. Jack. Yeah. yeah. Um, Brett, thanks for this. I'm, it looked to me like the, uh, in the, in the out years that the recycled rates are proposed to increase more than the potable rates, the regular water rates. And I know historically, it seems like we tried to keep the, the recycled rates um, less than the potable rates as one more way of encouraging uh, folks to, uh, to use recycled water where they could. And so I'm wondering, uh, is there any risk there where potable rates, I mean, recycled rates are gonna be as expensive as the potable rates? You see that happen? Yeah, if we apply the true cost of recycled water, they would, they would do that. So what that was one of the first um, steps there in the rate study process was goals. So one thing that our board decided is they always want to maintain at least, if possible, again, in that Prop 218 framework, mm -hmm. at least 20% uh, less than potable rates. Okay. And the, how we were able to, to um, achieve this this time, was the potable customers are actually paying for the capital needs of the recycled water fund. And the nexus is because they have more supply available. We have more supply available for potable customers because we have the recycled water, therefore potable water customers benefit. So there was a nexus is, so we shifted about, I think two, I want to say it's about 200,000 and the numbers are, you know, it's a different scale because it's such a small pool, but we shifted about 200 or, or 300,000 a year of capital cost from being paid by those 70 customers to being paid by about 4,000 customers on the port uh, portable fund side. And that allowed us to keep the recycled water rates um, still at a, at a discount in comparison with portable. Thank you. Michael. Thanks, uh, thanks Dave, thanks Fred. Um, so Fred, with the, the, the complexities that you mentioned the board has gone through with trying to split up the rate increase between the different users, does that mean it's gonna appear on our bills? Like some of it will be on the base use, some will be in tier one, some will be in tier two, and it'll, it's not gonna appear as 5% across the board, but it'll be split around in different ways? Correct, yeah. And actually some of, I believe, um, some of the basic meter charge, the fixed fee component is gonna stay pretty flat. What will go up the most is tier four. Some of the commercial customers are actually gonna see decreases because we have property tax revenue that we can use um, to, um, to subsidize because it doesn't fall under the same Prop 218 requirements. Um, so that was one of the decisions that we discussed at the last board meeting. What should be the most appropriate application of the property tax revenue we receive? Should it be across everybody equally? Should it be preference given to, we cannot give preference to customer groups, but within our tiered rates, because everybody is in the first tier, we can apply more property tax to tier one to keep the tier one lower for those people to take care of the most more vulnerable uh, groups of people that are also efficient water users and then apply less property tax to tier four. So that was a shift that the board discussed and they decided to help the tier one and two usage more and apply less property tax or no property tax, I believe to tier three and four. So yes, it's gonna be depending where you are, you're gonna be you know, seeing maybe, maybe less than 5% or as close to, I believe, I think 16% in the first year when, when the adjustments get made. Okay, well, I appreciate that, uh, you know, you guys have, have at least um, pursued a thoughtful process about it. Um, sometimes complication, a uh, complicated process, even though it's more equitable, can raise more concerns with some folks, you know, the conspiracy minded are thinking, oh, they're trying to hide things, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm confident you guys are um, going about it the right way. I just want to make one quick comment about the, um, the discussion you just had about the 
rates between potable and recycled. Um, I strongly support keeping the recycled rates lower, however you have to do it, because I suspect we are not fully valuing the value of the, the clean potable water, just as you know, climate change costs were not built into the cost of gas, um, and now we're suffering for that. Um, so the more we can stimulate the use of the recycled water in the long term, I think that's going to be the most cost efficient way for us to go. Agree. Yep. Another thing that we're considering as part of this is we are the only water agency in the county that is still on bi-monthly billing. So now having all of the intelligent meters that we don't have to drive around. And I believe that decision was made you know, a long time ago because that was more um, cost efficient to uh, cost effective to read meters six times a year versus 12 times a year. So now when we don't need to drive anywhere to read meters and everything else pretty much around us, people are used to monthly cycle, we are considering switching to monthly billing also. So that's another one that is a little bit of a, people need to, you can't compare bill to bill. You have to truly compare your monthly equivalent of your today's bill to the new bill. Well, are you, are you looking at just going all electronic or at least opt in for all electronic billing to save some of the mailing costs? We already have that. Oh, okay. We, yeah, yeah, we already have that. But what you, we, we've been electronic for quite a while for people who want to, but people have an option to choose paper bill if that's what they prefer. But it's not, that's not as, as, as costly. The, the reading the meters was the, the time consuming and costly activity. And we don't have to do that. We still have to drive to few of them that we don't get an accurate read. But it used to take about two to three weeks to get through all of the meters. It's uh, half a day now to do validate them all. Big improvement. Yeah. Anything else on this? Any hands? Any? Oh, oh, what did I do? I think that was <laughs> end of. I think that was the end of mine. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay. I think I got through my um, through my four big topics. So what, where are we? With a few minutes over. But any any questions on any of them? Anything else that I didn't cover and you've heard? Um, um, and you, you want to ask? Fred, uh, th this is Mike Shulman again. Uh, yeah. I, I have another question. You didn't, you didn't cover it, but especially with Jack and Donna being on the line as well, it, it's relevant to them. You know, the, the city is also um, putting through a rate increase for the water treatment plant. And there's this continuity, right, between you as a water service provider and them as a treatment, and then it gets treated and, and recycled, et cetera. I, I saw some reports, there's activity going on, at least down in Los Angeles, I'm sure you're well aware of it, of getting some approvals and uh, equipment upgrades to treat for potable use. Um, you know, whether it's through injection wells or directly to the sink, however it is, is there, is there communication and collaboration between your group and the city so that when they're making infrastructure improvements and getting new equipment at the treatment side, that we're at least positioning ourselves and setting ourselves up for these more advanced treatment options so that we can more fully use the recycled water at the back end. That almost feel, feels like it was planted this question. <laughs> 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 no, it's, it's, and the two council members we have um, uh, participating, Donna and, and Jack, were exactly the two members that were, um, we had a city district um, ad hoc committee that met for six months. And we were exactly talking about um, topics like that. How can we make sure that um, what we do and what the city does in terms of upgrading um, or maintaining their assets, that we have a long, long um, strategic vision in mind that um, we are on the same page, because that is where the future is going to be. You're absolutely right. At the moment, it goes to the ocean, that um, portable water becomes wastewater and by and large in the state of California, I, I would say 70 to 90% of that is still goes into the ocean and then, you know, goes into the clouds and then rains back and goes into the ground and then we capture it again. But the future certainly is making that cycle much um, shorter. Would it be direct potable? Um, that is 
probably still a decade or so out, maybe, maybe not. It depends on how many, how bad the bad drought years we get. Typically that makes things going quicker. But what is um, called indirect potable is happening in many, many places. And we are, as part of the Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency and the projects and management actions that this agency is considering for this basin is um, some of the projects include capturing, taking the recycled water, treating it to advanced treated level, then injecting into the basin and um, essentially it becoming our supplemental supply. Um, so it is not a cheap project, but considering the, the um, challenges or scares of the climate change, I think it's a, it's a project we need to have in our toolbox for sure. Yeah, and if I, if I can add just a little bit to that. Um, yeah, we've productive meetings between the water district and the city. And uh, while no absolute definitive plans have been laid out, we've talked about things that could happen. And as Ferret um, mentioned, the, uh, the groundwater sustainability plan that needs to be produced over the next six months um, is looking, is listing of different potential projects that could happen. And the city is in the midst of sending out a request for proposals to, to uh, get to, to get folks in to help us with what's the big thing, the best thing to do for the future of our wastewater treatment plant that needs some significant upgrades. At the same time, we'll be looking at how do we also help our, our water supply um, scenarios. So we'll be looking at all of that. Still just, uh, so we haven't picked out any specific things, but we'll be looking at all the, the options. So the, so the sustainability plan is looking more at how much water do we need to be sustainable as to opposed to what are going to be the exact solutions. Those will evolve as we, uh, as we learn more. And um, the rates, I believe you adopted them last this week, last week, Jack. Yes, we did. Yeah. So the rates that, and that was a little bit of confusion I saw on social media too, that your Prop 218 notices, people were all like, who, who is the water district and city? <laughs> It, we, we get confused a lot, but this does not include those rates. They were necessary just to uh, maintain and operate the infrastructure that the city has for wastewater. It does not include the potential upgrades that the plant needs. That is like Jack said, I believe the RFP actually came back, was closed and you're pretty close to hopefully having somebody taking That's it on. Yeah. So, so that is gonna be a work, uh, six months, something like that, that they evaluate yep. what the needs are. And then I think part of that also looking regional. Can we, should we do, should we consider projects that are, um, have more beneficiaries than just Scotts Valley? Because then we have a larger pool of um, people that are hopefully paying into that. Yeah, we're trying to look at all, um, yeah. all potential solutions. Yeah. And the funny thing is, I had just today talked with Scott about the LA program on showers to flowers or uh, toilet to tap. We like the showers to flowers title better. That LA is used. She was just explaining that they have minerals. I know you're cutting in and out a little bit. Gee, and I really wanted to hear that too. <laughs> yeah, Donna, your your audio is not is not the, the best. But now, Michael, this is it's done in many many places, and Southern California seems to be a little bit ahead of um, the curve um, there. Um, but they also have um, the population um, density that makes those projects a little bit more affordable per per unit of water or per, per customer. Um, it is, it's a little bit harder when you're kind of rural or semi-rural to, to build the pipelines and pump the water because the wastewater ends up always near, the outfalls are near the ocean and the customers that are creating that wastewater tend to be uphill. <laughs> so you need to pump that water back uphill and that's not a, um, that also makes it a relatively uh, expensive operationally. 
Yeah. Well, I'm all for LA to figure out how to get it done and then we'll just steal the technology and implement it cheaply up here. Yeah, the technology has come a long way. The technology has exactly. come a long way. Yep. Okay, do we have any other questions? Okay, so any of you who, who are on the call and if you have groups of people, it doesn't matter, it could be a group of two, I guess that's a group, uh, <laughs> group of two or group of 20 or 200, if you would like to hear more about any of those topics that I talked about or anything else that is water re related, please email me, call me, call the main office, come by. Um, it's I personally just love talking about water. I know I'm a little geeky this way, but I can't help it. Um, so, and if you hear or see people just saying facts about water, I think encourage them to to um, get, get us involved because we, as much as we like to provide water, we also um, like to um, just build awareness about the shared resource we have here and um, and now we're here for you. Yeah, that was a lot of great information, Perrette. I was just thinking, uh, you know, we've got 500 people on our mailing list and we're uh, used to doing workshops. And I think we can get together and brainstorm about how we can reach some local groups because um, I think it's, uh, it's a good idea. You've got Montevalli, we could meet we could go to Spring Lakes, we could go to Loma Vista. Um, I guess it's a little bit tricky reaching individual residences outside of there, but um, I'm sure we can come up with, with ways, of, ways and places that we could meet. I'd love that. Yes, let's put our heads together. So our next workshop is going to be see on july 19th we'll be hosting the animal shelter of santa cruz and they'll be discussing wild animals of santa cruz county so look forward to that tune in tell your friends and um, sign up for our newsletter and our website and uh, we'll keep you appraised of everything that's going on around here so thanks for coming everybody Thank you for inviting me. Oh, yeah, Brett, thank you. As always, <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you on our program. Thank you. Thanks for hosting, guys. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye, everybody.